here I'm going to be showing you some of the modes on the camera and how the uh, actual unit functions. At the moment the mode dial is set to intelligent auto. This tries to adjust the settings automatically for the photo that you're taking. So here I've got some fruit set up on my table and it's telling me by the green symbol in the top right hand corner that it's going to backlight the subject because it's quite heavily lit from the side and front. I take the photo, the flash fires to backlight the subject and you get a well exposed picture. Moving the mode dial round is easy, we have an easy mode which simplifies the display. We also have an anti-motion blur mode which reduces the, the blow when shooting in low light without a flash. And then we have the twilight mode which is very effective indeed. You can take a low light shot and it actually takes six individual captures of the image and then combines them to make one evenly exposed, exposed picture. Then we've got various scene modes which we, we can select using the four-way rocker switch. These are very useful. For example, we have one here which actually adds blue to the scene making pictures nice and vivid if they're of water action. Then we have the movie mode. This camera shoots at 720p and at 30 frames per second. So the high def footage that comes out from this camera with its stereo sound is very effective indeed. I'm going to be showing you some footage shot with this in the second review. Then we have a sweep panorama mode for taking panorama pictures. Instead of taking individual frames as you would with another camera and then joining them together, here you click the shutter once and then you sweep your camera from left to right following the arrow on the display. When you've completed moving the camera across, the DSC WX1 automatically joins the photos together to create a 5 megapixel panoramic photo. If I zoom into this, you can see that the joining on the photo is pretty impressive. And again, I'll be showing you some results of this uh, edited into the review. We also have a program auto mode, so you can actually adjust the settings and it automatically gives you the correct exposure. If I go back around to this intelligent auto mode, it's worth noting that if I zoom into the subject, it does actually adjust the setting because it thinks I'm taking a macro shot, as you can see in the top left hand corner by the macro symbol. Again, the photo is nice and rich, a good amount of detail and nice colouring. Let's go back out to the main menu and just show you what the menu system offers you. From the top selection, you can adjust the resolution of your photos. You can also select burst mode. Now burst mode in high is very effective. It shoots at 10 frames per second and then this is great for action shots Okay, so the action's over in one second, so it all happens pretty quickly. But for sports, etc., if you can tie the camera up for that length of time while it processes the, the images it's taken, then you're bound to get a good result. Then you've got exposure compensation. This adjusts the image brightness and darkness. You've also got scene recognition, which can be set to auto or advanced. And then you have smile detection sensitivity. I'll come back to this later on, but this is a very nice feature. We have face detection, which can be set to auto, given child priority or adult priority. And then we have red eye reduction, which can be set to auto on or off. And then we just have a settings menu for setting the sounds when you press buttons and the date and time. Let's go back out of this menu mode and now we're back into intelligent auto mode again. The smile feature that I mentioned previously is accessible by the pressing this button here to the left. 
This I can't really demonstrate with the fruit because the fruit isn't going to smile at me. But basically the meter on the left, if your subject's smiling goes up and down, when they smile a full smile, perhaps showing their teeth, then the camera will automatically take the photo. This is fantastic for if you're using it in combination with Sony's Party Shot Edition where the camera rotates and pans up and down to take pictures within your party. The camera will then automatically take the shot whenever it detects anyone smiling within the scene. I've tested this and it works very well. It might sound gimmicky, but it's a very nice function. This is Dave from geekanoids.co.uk. It's quite a windy day, so I'm not sure you can hear the audio on this. I also experience some lens noise as I zoom in and out. Well, I've been very impressed with the performance of the Sony DSC WX1. This new CyberShot camera from Sony is very compact, it's very fast, and its low light performance has impressed me a great deal. The twilight mode, where it shoots handheld in low light and then combines the six photos into one to give you a perfectly lit and perfectly exposed photo, is very impressive indeed. As you can see, from the design of the camera, its lens protrudes from the front of the camera. This might be a problem for some, but you're getting some great optics within that five times optical zoom range. The fact that it zooms in five times optically and also gives you 24 millimeters at the widest angle makes this a perfect camera for all sorts of situations. The cheapest price I found this in the UK is 254 pounds and 95 pence and I think that that is a fantastic value for money for the amount of technology you're getting within this camera. Well, thank you very much for listening. This has been Dave from geekanoids.co.uk. Come back soon and check out more reviews. This video review is sponsored by Crucial, the memory experts. They provide reliable PC, notebook and Mac memory to boost your system performance and improve your general workflow.